So what would a Marine Le Pen presidency mean for Ukraine and Europe, despite the new face, the kinder, gentler face, if you will, that she put on the race in this, this context, this time around? She's still Marine Le Pen, and a, a win against Macron would be extraordinary. Yes, Andrea, she's smiling a lot more, but she's still Marine Le Pen, and she still wants uh, every Muslim woman in uh, France uh, to be fined if she wears a headscarf that's in her program. Uh, but more worryingly uh, for the West, for the U.S. administration, for all France's European allies, uh, she is close to Vladimir Putin. She went there during the 2017 campaign. Uh, Putin said he didn't want to interfere in the, uh, in the election. She said she would lift sanctions as soon as possible if elected. She scrambled of late to distance herself since the war began, but she is close to him. She's skeptical of NATO. Uh, she's skeptical of the EU. At one point, wanted to withdraw entirely. Uh, and so uh, this would be a very, very worrying development for the alliance at this moment with a war in Europe if we had a president, Marine Le Pen, in France. And, Roger, let's just talk about Macron's re-election strategy, because it was notable that he announced his re-election, instead of going on television with just a newspaper column, he has been mm -hmm. trying to project himself as the leader of Europe, post-Merkel Europe, in trying to negotiate a solution before the invasion and since with Vladimir Putin. So he wasn't campaigning. He didn't do debates. And did the French voters react against that? They did react. Uh, you know, in the polls, Andrea, about a, a month ago, he had a clear, like, 10 percent advantage over her. He was distracted. He appeared somewhat aloof, even smug. Uh, he was on the phone every other day to Vladimir Putin, which was a habit with distinctly diminishing returns. And in the end, I think that did have an effect on the French public. Now, of course, uh, he, is, he is fully focused, but uh, it was almost as if this was tedious. Uh, at one point, there was a cartoon in Le Mans with him turning away from a crowd at a rally and saying, on, on his cell phone, and saying, sorry, Vladimir, I've got to deal with this boring thing, but I'll be back to you in a couple of minutes. And that was, <laughs> that was kind of the impression that was... Uh, beginning to form. Nevertheless, uh, yeah, at one point last week, it looked like there might be just a 2% margin between them. It is 4%, but there's still a lot of potential support for Le Pen in the second round, and this is by no means a done deal. Macron is still the favorite, but he's not the overwhelming favorite. And Jonathan Lemire, what is the White House reaction to this? They've got to be concerned that they might lose an ally in Macron and have to deal with Marine Le Pen, which would, you know, continue what we just saw in the re-election of Viktor Orban in Hungary, you know, really extreme conservative and pro-Russian leaders in Europe. Yeah, and I wrote about this for this weekend, Andrew. The White House is deeply concerned and watching very warily uh, to this result uh, in France. As anticipated, they figured it would be a final two between Macron and Le Pen. And for all the reasons just outlined, they would be very dismayed if Le Pen were to win. It would be the end of NATO as they know it. Uh, the European Union, too, is a suggestion that she, at some point, might do a Frexit, the French equivalent of Brexit, and pull France out of that. And even if she doesn't go that far, it would certainly be destabilized. And she's cast great skepticism about the coalition uh, to stop Moscow's aggression in Ukraine. You know, she has been very sympathetic to Putin in the past. Uh, and the White House would be deeply concerned if she were to win or even if Macron were to only win very narrowly. What sort of chilling effect that could have across Europe that other leaders there uh, might suddenly have second thoughts uh, about supporting this coalition to stand with Ukraine if they fear that they also might face a populist challenge at home, perhaps one uh, less, uh, you know, more palatable, I should say, uh, than Le Pen would be. And as a final note, senior White House advisors and Biden administration officials tell me they're also on the lookout for any Russian election interference, disinformation campaigns, bots and the like, trying to tip the scales in the French election. We know they've done try to do that in the United States. They've done that in the United Kingdom. White House says looking for that, too, although at the moment they feel like most of the Russian energy on that front, of course, in the war in Ukraine rather than France. But 
Still two weeks to go. And Roger, I think they did that, that Russia did that five years ago in France. Uh, and what they you've did, seen yeah. in this in this race, this time there were 11 candidates. Uh, as you reported today, 51 percent of the vote in the elections yesterday was anti-NATO. So that, that's got to be concerning. Uh, to what do we see as we see sure, by the left it, and it the right, concerning. you know, parties yeah. coming together against NATO uh, yeah. as a go well, forward? Well, uh, Marine Le Pen was helped in the end by the emergence of a even further right candidate an almost Trump-like figure, TV pundit turned politician, called Eric Zamour. He faded down to about 7% of the vote in the end, but immediately said that he's adding his 7% to Marine Le Pen's uh, 23%. So she's going to get that support. And then on the left of the political spectrum, you have Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who did surprisingly well, actually got pretty close to Marine Le Pen on 22%, just a percentage point or a bit more of her total. And uh, he appealed to a lot of young people. Yeah, he's anti-NATO. Uh, he's strong on green climate issues. Uh, and he, he made a strong campaign. He's a good orator. Uh, but again, the, 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 the center of the French political system, Andrea, collapsed, totally collapsed. It's almost as if the Republican Party and the Democratic Party disappeared overnight. The Socialist Party, which was running France with a socialist president, Francois Hollande, five years ago, got under 2 percent, under 2 percent of the vote. And the center-right party, the Republicans, got under 5 percent. So they got less than 7 percent between them. These were the two pillars on the center-right and center-left of post-war France. So it's a very changed uh, political scene here.